Find out how this ordinary kid saved millions of lives in San Francisco. The life of Scott family was devastated when they learned their 18-month-old son is diagnosed with blood cancer. It was too much for the family to handle. Things took an unexpected turn when an organization knocked at the door and the ailed boy made a wish. Neither the organization nor his parents had expected such an unusual wish to be coming from him. Find out how this odd desire eventually made him save an entire city. Nick Scott, a farmer by profession, was living with his family in Tula Lake, located at the far end of Northern California. His small family included Natalie, his wife, and two small children. He, along with his family, was living a very peaceful life in this peaceful and small settlement with a population not more than 1,000 people. Coming back home from work and snuggling with his 18-month-old son, Miles Scott, used to be the best moment of the day for Nick. Likewise, one day Miles was cuddling with his parents in bed when his mother saw a lump on his jaw. Naturally, Natalie got worried and took him to the doctor to get it checked. Doctor, on the other hand, checked him physically and diagnosed him with an ear infection. However, Nick and Natalie remained doubtful of that as their kid had no symptoms matching that disease. They suspected it was something else and so decided to go for a blood test. The results came after a few weeks of tests. It was going to shake them from within. Coincidentally, Natalie was working for the same doctor and when the results came in, it became difficult for the doctor to enlighten her about her son's condition. However, Natalie found out by his expression that something was severely amiss. She was waiting for the doctor to say something, and the doctor revealed that Miles was diagnosed with leukemia. Its victim mostly includes children. It begins with the production of white blood cells named lymphocytes present in the bone marrow. The leukemia cells attack the blood very quickly, thereafter sprawling to other parts of the body, liver, central nervous system, spleen, liver, and lymph nodes. Needless to say, it was shocking news for Nick and Natalie both. Suddenly, their blissful life had turned into a painful one. As far as Miles was concerned, not even two years old, he was too young to understand the gravity of his disease. His parents immediately admitted him to a hospital in Portland, Oregon, to get the treatment started. It was the first time for Miles to get on a plane, and that is why he got very scared. To help him get over the fear, Nick lied down with him on the gurney so that they could be tied down together. This little kid had his entire life changed. Blood transfusion and chemotherapy became an integral part of his life. Miles was a toddler and going through chemotherapy weeks after weeks was too much to expect for him. However, there was no other way out. The treatment sucked the energy out of him, leaving him tired and weak. His immune system got so vulnerable that he needed to be kept away from crowds. There was one thing nobody could keep Miles away from. When Miles was not busy with his treatment, he used to watch old episodes of Batman with his father. He loved superheroes and Batman was his favorite among them. He was so enchanted by the superheroes that all he wanted was costumes and toys like them. His mother never stopped him from watching superhero series as she thought it would help him to differentiate between right and wrong. The tedious treatment procedure was harassing him even when it was done. He began to have nightmares making him cry all night. Sadly, he was too little to understand what was going on in his life. Usually, the kids his age are agile and play a lot, but he was limited to his house as he was always too exhausted to go out and run around. Many years passed by with him undergoing chemotherapy to battle leukemia. Owing to his persisting disease, he got qualified to get a present from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. When his parents heard of it, they wasted no time in reaching out to them. It was a ray of light and darkness, and he was excited to participate. His parents wasted no time in arranging a meeting with local volunteers for the organization. In the meeting, they informed the volunteers about how their son was diagnosed with leukemia at such a vulnerable age and how courageously he was battling since then. Needless to say, that was an emotional moment with both parents having their eyes moist with tears. It pulled at the heartstrings of volunteers and they turned towards the kid to know more about him. Subsequently, the volunteers interacted with Miles. They asked him what he wished for. Miles had to color a picture of that. 
What he drew was nothing short of a surprise for Volunteer and his parents. He made a picture of Batman, and the reason behind it was going to sweep the floor under their feet. What did he mean by drawing the picture of the fictional character? Did he want a costume like this or a toy? Perhaps he wanted to meet the actor. The answer to all his questions is hell no. He wanted something else, something near impossible. He wanted to be Batman. Now it put the volunteers in a dilemma as they had never heard of a wish as strange as this. What bothered them more was how were they going to fulfill this wish? But now that the wish had been made, the organization was compelled to fulfill it, and the way they chose will stump you. As volunteers failed to find a way to fulfill the wish, the news reached the ears of the CEO of the Bay Area branch of Make-A-Wish, Patricia Wilson. Like others, she too got amazed by his wish, but unlike others, she came up with the perfect idea of making Miles' wish come true. It was going to be the beginning of a roller coaster of a life Miles was going to set on. Patricia had everything in her mind. She looked for a person who would impersonate grown-up Batman that will accompany the little Batman that was going to be Miles, and together they would go on an adventure. And it was then that our favorite little hero, Bat-Kid, came into existence. Yeah, it is the same Bat-Kid who took the world by storm. Now the question was, where were they going to execute the plan? But before finding out the location, it was important to search for the grown-up Batman. Patricia wrote a mail to stunt actor and tech whiz Eric E.J. Johnston if he would like to play the part of older Batman. When Sue, wife of Eric, got the mail, she said she has no option but to take up the role of damsel in distress. E.J. thought they would have their part of the adventure in a park. However, there was something else going on in the mind of Miles' parents. They wanted their son to see the world outside their small town, so they came up with another mind-blowing idea. They decided on taking him to San Francisco. But was it going to be easy to have his wish come true without knowing anyone in the city? Patricia got on the work immediately. She sent emails to important position holders of San Francisco. You must be wondering why she was doing this. Well, the little bat kid needed his own Gotham to go on an adventure. And in order to build Gotham, the consent and support of key profile individuals were needed. Surprisingly, everyone she approached was more than happy to participate in this unique project. The help was pouring in from all corners of the city. Ama Dates, serving as a local branch's reporter of ABC News, came forward to join the mission, and so was Greg Sir. Not only that, Ed Lee, the mayor of San Francisco, took part in it too. Now the team was ready to set the ball rolling with its team. Now all they needed was 200 volunteers who would cheer for Bat-Kid by standing on the sidelines at each piece of Bat-Kid's mission. Along with that, Patricia made sure there are two motorcycle escorts to give the set a real look. EJ, on the other hand, was very excited about this project. To make the experience feel more real, for Miles, he designed a glove that projected images similar to Batman. Everything was going according to plan, and they were moving at a fast pace towards Bat-Kid's special day. But who was going to be Bat-Kid's villain? Patricia had never thought it would be so easy. The only part that posed a bit of a problem was finding out the right villain. Joker was the first choice that came to her mind, but he would have been too scary for the five-year-old boy. That is why they settled for Riddler and the Penguin. They had to recruit more volunteers. Mike Jutan was roped into playing the role of Penguin put out a post on his Facebook about their plan. His words soon reached the world, and then something happened that was not expected. EJ's Facebook post spread like wildfire. Bat Kid became the most heard name, and his life story turned out to be the most viral story of that time. It was all over the place, on blogs, in news, and a number of websites. His story transcended the boundaries of his country. Suddenly, this little angel became the center of attraction of the world. And you know what? It was just the beginning. People from all around the world called the team. As if that was not enough, Patricia, EJ, and Mike's mailboxes got flooded with emails conveying love for Bat-Kid. From all this, Miles was enjoying his childhood back at his home in Tallulah Lake. Bat-Kid had conquered millions of hearts. People in great numbers responded positively to volunteer at the event. Not only that, many Bat-Kid's fans bought plane tickets to San Francisco so that they could become a witness of this historic moment. The special day had many exciting surprises for Miles. Make-A-Wish planned a lunch for Miles at a burger bar that later on received reservation requests for 7,000 people for the same day. 
there were some who began producing Bat Kids t-shirts. So what did his parents have to say about this? When Nick and Natalie heard about the number of people who were planning on attending the event, they were dumbfounded. 13,000 people were going to be a part of Miles' wish. On the other hand, Patricia was straining all her nerves to make the event a success. For that, she had to do a lot of tasks along with answering thousands of volunteer requests. It was to see how shy Miles was going to react to that. Needless to say, Miles' parents were doubtful about the good execution of the plan, but Patricia was fully confident that the event would turn out to be a big success. After all, there was a great population out looking forward and supporting the event. Interestingly, there were many people who offered their own Lamborghinis for a day to be used as a temporary Batmobile. Many more offers were made by the towering personalities. Twitter, too, jumped on the bandwagon and came forward to help make a wish foundation. The representatives of this giant social site offered help in managing the organization's Twitter handle in disseminating minute-to-minute -minute information about the Bat Kid's adventurous journey to his fans. Who was left on Earth who did not want to be part of this event? Hans Zimmer, who has composed the music for Dark Knight films, came out and expressed his desire to give a final touch to the day's action. He ended up composing Bat Kid's soundtrack. The San Francisco Opera was tasked with sewing, measuring, and mending of costumes the whole day so that nothing looked fake. Admirably, the opera did it even when they had another show in production simultaneously. Finally, with the joint effort of so many people, Gotham was ready. The only thing left now was to bring the Bat Kid to his Gotham City. Little Miles had no idea how much the world was excited to see him as Bat Kid. The only thing he knew was that he was going to be Batman and was about to go on a trip to San Francisco. What he did not know was that he needed to learn acrobatics in order to come over the obstacle courses designed for him. It was then the five-year-old stepped into a gym. Well, that wasn't a gym to be precise, that was something else. It was a circus with all the acrobats donning superhero costumes. It looked as if that gym, where all the other superheroes in the world get its training. Miles enjoyed the session a lot with EJ. However, he did not know till then who EJ was and why he was practicing acrobats. It was the night before his special day. Ama Dates, a prominent journalist from ABC News, visited Miles. A major population of San Francisco had crowded the premises of the hotel only to see the would-be back kid. Ama got surprised when she learned that Miles had no inkling about what was on the horizon. Eventually came the morning of the most awaited day. It began with Nick and Natalie watching a pre-recorded DVD for Miles. The TV had Ama, the news lady on it. Miles recognized her in one glance, but she was saying something. Her tone was weird, and she was saying that the police chief wanted to share an important message. Greg Sir clarified that he was looking for Batman, and for that he needed Bat Kid's help. He also mentioned a damsel in distress. He requested if anyone could come forward and help her out. That brought the end of the video. Miles was watching that with awe, and it was then someone knocked at his hotel door. He opened the door to Batman. He asked him for his help, and Bat Kid leaped into his costume at once. Batman asked Bat Kid whether he practiced acrobat or not, to which he confidently replied in positive. At that moment, Miles did not know that the man behind the mask was EJ. Therefore, both the superheroes clattered down the stairs only to see a spectacular scene. The road had amassed thousands of people, the sky was filled with news helicopters flying around over Union Square. On the other side, the Batmobile was roaring from the inside of the hotel's loading dock. Both Batman and Bat Kid jumped into the Batmobile and rushed to save the damsel in distress. Batman and Bat Kid reached the damsel in distress by following the directions given by the police chief. The lady was bound to a cable car track next to the bomb planted by Riddler. The cable car was moving fast toward her from the other side. They had very little time in hand, so without wasting it, they began untying her. The two finally rescued the lady. The lady embraced and thanked the Bat Kid, not to forget the lady in the costume of the damsel in distress was none other than the eminent actress Sue. Batman and Bat Kid had successfully completed their first challenge. The crowds standing on the side were cheering for them when another challenge came their way. The police chief, through a video message, informed the duo that the Riddler was running amok in a bank some miles away from them. The pair ran towards the evil in their Batmobile. The two got into the bank. Bat Kid had never seen a real-life villain before. 
But regardless, he was all set to take on the challenge. Batkid tapped a button and trapped Riddler in a vault. This way, Batkid had his first bad guy. The police chief was extremely happy at little Batkid's big achievement and suggested both of them go on lunch. But there was another hurdle waiting for them. Batkid talked a lot with Batman during lunch at the burger bar. During the conversation, he admitted that he's too tired to continue as Batkid. It seemed the end of this beautiful journey was in offing, but everything changed when Batkid looked out from the window. Miles perceived thousands of fans waiting for him outside the restaurant. They were holding a banner with a message written on it. The San Francisco Giants mascot, Lucille, had been kidnapped by Penguin. He had taken him to AT&T Park. That made Batkid change his mind immediately. He braced himself for one more mission and rushed with Batman towards the stadium. First, he untied Lucille and then moved towards Penguin to defeat him. He went up the steep stairs following the villain. He managed to overcome smoke bombs and explosions with the help of his aerobatic skills. Lastly, he successfully caught the Penguin and made him bite the dust. The police chief gave another message, go to City Hall. The San Francisco City Hall was filled with local tourists and international people. They all had come here to celebrate the day with Miles. Miles climbed up the stairs toward the podium and stood next to Mayor Ed Lee. Mind you, he was a mayor of Gotham, not of San Francisco. He gave back Kid the key to the city, but that was not the end of the thrill. Patricia came on stage to make a revelation to the people present. She revealed that Miles was done with his chemotherapy and his disease was in remission. The news was cherry on the cake for the public. They were literally jumping with joy. Batkid got his fan in Hollywood, too. Those who previously played Batman, Val Kilmer, Ben Affleck, Christian Bale, Michael Keaton, and Adam West stayed updated about him with Twitter live feed and expressed their reactions on social sites. Not only Hollywood, but then-President Obama and First Lady Michelle sent their love to Miles. You may agree that the story of Batkid conveys a message of humanity and unity to the world. Chemotherapy had sucked all the money out of Miles' family. Despite that, a major part of the fees was yet to be paid, but after the Batkid went viral, all expenses got paid by Miles' fans. It was a big help for his family. Miles enjoyed the event thoroughly, though he could not grasp the efforts and planning that went into its making. Miles' wish was finally fulfilled in the most beautiful way. His parents are very thankful to Patricia and her foundation. And San Francisco got their little hero.